Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel once again. If it's your first time here, my name's Peter and I speak about all things Thailand. Right, a couple of things I want to talk about before I get into the stories. If you don't like the intros, you can just skip forward. Some guys kind of write and say, just get to the point. Uh, but there is a couple of things I'd like to talk about. First off, somebody wrote to me and said, why do you sit so low in the video? Uh, there's a simple reason for that. If I put the camera or the tripod rather lower, then it catches the top of the, the screen and it messes up my green screen behind me. That's the first thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, do you remember last Saturday, if you're a regular to the channel and you listen to these stories every Saturday, do you remember the first story last Saturday? I, it was a story from a, a female, an English girl, about her Thai girlfriend. It was a girl-on-girl -girl kind of experience. And I have been putting out and asking for... Uh, Western females to send in their stories if they've got any stories and I have been lucky enough to get a couple the one last week and the week before well I've had a kind of mixed result from that I've had one or two guys write to me and said oh you know I don't like these stories I only want to hear the crash and burn stories and don't ever tell those sort of stories again and I've tried my best to explain to people that you know I have a wide audience now I think last time I looked there was something like 35k uh, who are subscribed to the channel and many of those are because they like to listen to the stories also a lot of women are subscribed I can go into the back end of YouTube and have a look and I know there's about a thousand women who are subscribed and I would imagine it's to listen to these stories so all I would say on that one guys because we did get some positive feedback I got some positive feedback uh, some of you guys out there you did enjoy that story uh, and, and that's reflected in the comments so all I'd say to you at this point was if you're one of those guys who don't like the female stories just skip forward because it's not like you're going to listen to it for 15 minutes and then discover it's a theme a story about a western female lady because i always say at the beginning or the last two stories i've had that this story involves a western woman so you'll know immediately and you can skip to the next one um will i cut them out like one guy wrote to me and said don't tell them anymore or a couple of guys uh, no i don't think so because as i say there's an old saying isn't there you can please some of the people some of the time uh, but you can't please all of the people all of the time and, and i think that's very very true especially in this case so uh, once again guys if you're not really into those kind of stories uh, just kind of skip forward now ladies if you're watching this and you're not sure whether to send in a story Absolutely, I welcome it. I'll change your name. I'll make it anonymous, and I'll read it out on the channel. Any any kind of relationship um, that you've had in Thailand, whether it's girl, girl, boy, boy, a Thai man, whatever, uh, I'd love to get your story. And I am kind of running a little bit low on the regular stories now. So, guys, if you're sitting on a story, or you're one of those guys who's kind of been thinking, uh, shall I, shan't I? Now's a good time to send one in. You'll probably get it read uh, to you quite quickly. Okay, that said and done. Um, we're almost three minutes into the video, and I haven't started any of this stories yeah it's three or four stories this week uh, a couple of short ones uh, a main event and then a short one at the end so i won't waste any more time let's jump straight into the first one i have been watching the stories on your channel for a while and i enjoy them i just thought i would send you an email about my unfortunate tale that i that indirectly involves thailand i am an australian guy in his mid 50s I will get straight to the point. About 10 years ago, I met someone on an online dating site. You can use the name she gave me. Her name was Amiria. She told me she was from Thailand. It started slowly getting to know each other, gaining my confidence and trust and getting information. I was not directly asked for money for about six months. Then it was just small amounts, $50 here and $100 there. But don't get me wrong, it got bigger, much bigger. Amiria eventually telling me she had received an inheritance from her dad who had passed away. She needed help to get the items back to Thailand as he had died overseas. This is where it started and went on for the next six years. Let me clarify, I'm single, never married and not really had any luck with the ladies. After we became closer or so I thought, arrangements were finally made to meet in Thailand I had never been outside of Australia, so in 2018, I got all my stuff together and I flew to Bangkok and after landing, went to my hotel in the Bang Rak area and contacted Amiria. Feeling pretty good, we were finally going to meet in person, but to my dismay, she said her mother was ill and she had to go to their village, but would be back in Bangkok in two or three, three days and I should enjoy myself till she got back. Well... Three days came and went, still no show. I got pretty pissed off and after six days, I cut my two week trip short and went back to Australia. 
Not hearing from Amiria for about three weeks when I eventually contact it's all apologies and over the next six months to a year she works her web again until it's supposedly all done and it's time for us to finally be together and happy forever. Amiria is now apparently about 40 years old and everything was going as normal until all contact was severed on the 15th of March. She had told me her mother was ill and not expected to live so I thought she must have died but after five days still nothing so I put her email into my computer and up, up pops a dating scam alert. This girl is an internationally known dating scammer and I am not the first. I feel like a total idiot but it's happened and I can't do much about it. I have details of bank accounts where some money was sent so may be able to recoup some of the money I've lost. After all this, I don't hate Thailand or Thais. In fact, when I can, I would like to return. I was stupid and it cost me. And when I think of this person, is probably they're probably not Thai anyway. Okay, so a few things to say on this story. He keeps referring to the person as she. He doesn't know it's a she. It's a typical romance scam. You know, it's a long game. Whoever's doing this scam has kind of reeled them in. And they've obviously worked out that guys look for ladies in Thailand. And they've obviously jumped on the bandwagon. But what the other thing I'd say, I'm not, not wanting to be Mr. Know-it-all. But what I would have done is the name. I would have put that into Google before I'd started and wasted all my time. But okay, he he's learned. Let's not uh, point the dirty stick, as they say. I'm sure he's learned and he'll move on. Right, let's jump into story number two. I am not much for writing and would love to be able to talk to you directly over an app. I am a voyager and started out traveling with family as a child. My father worked for the State Department. I have been to all the countries and lived in Finland, Sweden, UK, USA, Australia, the Netherlands, Ghana, Uganda, Japan, Colombia and a the former Yugoslavia to name a few. When I was 50 and living in LA, I met a 22 year old Thai girl. I lived with her for a while, married her and after seven years divorced her. She came from a wealthy family. Their father was a manager of the Thai military bank and her mother was also an executive of the, of the bank of Thailand. Anyway, my former wife introduced me to Thailand and we went there on numerous occasions. I will save this story for later, but it is an intro into what happened after our divorce. We divorced when I was 57, no kids. For the next seven years, I went on an international dating spree, mostly through Asian Friend Finder. Though dating diverse women, I wanted to see if there was a potential for a more permanent relationship. I chose Thailand, China and the Philippines to set up my dates. I would hook up through the dating site and then continue conversation through personal emails and video FaceTime. I was looking for someone that had five characteristics. Chemistry with me, good communication, intelligence, kindness, and the, the ability to cook. They also had to have a, com a conventional job. And after their own play uh, and their own place, I could stay during my visit to also make it more cost effective. I would schedule four dates in the same city, go for a month and spend a week with each girl. That was the general idea, but it would change depending on the girl. Maybe one would last one day and maybe some would last one month. I visit 20 of the biggest Chinese cities, about eight different places in Thailand, Bang Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Rayong, Phuket, Krabi, Phuket, Koh Samui, Koh Chang and four places in the Philippines. Needless to say, I have a ton of stories and travel experiences and I met a lot of people, most of whom lacked common sense. I will tell you one story here. A girl I met was 24 years old and still lived with her parents. Although she worked for a sales company as a manager assistant, she lived in Rayong. I found a real nice place near her, which was like a resort type with a private cottage, a slight diversion from my plan, but it was worth it. This girl would come and visit me every day and I got to meet her parents who were affluent ties and had their own big house. This girl was physically stunning, spoke good English, but I never got to try her cooking. Anyway, I spent three weeks with her and after three months came back to see her again. The parents were very strict with her and insisted she be home by 10 p.m. She drove her own car. On my second visit, I brought the parents nice presents and told them that I was very serious about their daughter, which she interpreted as I don't speak Thai and they don't speak English. 
When we got back to the place where I was staying, I gave the girl an engagement ring and she told me that her parents expected a $10,000 dowry, but that was just a formality to show in front of their friends during en engagement ceremony and that I would get that money back. I told her that as far as I knew, that was not a Thai custom and what are they doing? Are they selling her? At that, she got really angry, slapped me, took off the engagement ring and threw it at me and then just walked out. For the first time she showed me her temper and I thought that the whole thing started to look a bit like a scam. We had been very intimate throughout our stay and she had been considerate when I took her out, not picking out the most expensive items on the menu and always checking the bill to make sure I wasn't getting ripped off. The sudden red flags got the better of me and I just packed up and went to Bangkok. Sometimes I wonder if I made the right decision. Some stories are not for public consumption. Yeah, I, I think he made a big mistake there, to be honest with you guys. Um, that thing with the dowry, it's called a sin sod in Thailand. That thing with the dowry, that's quite common now, especially with um, ties from more affluent families. So what they'll do, it's a, it's a face thing, isn't it? You know, um, if you don't know what face is, you can go look it up on Google. Um, but basically what happens is the girl gets married and the guy gives this huge dowry uh, sin sod and it, it gives the family face because look our daughter's married into this very wealthy person's uh, family look at what he's given as a dowry and they get a you know they get face as they say and what happens a lot of the time now I know this through ties what will happen is after the wedding they'll give that money back to the person who actually gave it um, because it's um, it's a tradition it gives face and you know they don't a lot of the families they don't actually need the money they're wealthy themselves so it's just a show that their daughter's marrying into wealth but they don't actually need that money and they, they give it back and so so i know that to be true in many thai um weddings relationships now the thing is guys uh if you're in a relationship with a bar girl and you give that dowry you're never going to see that money again and it will be a total scam and, and the thing about giving a bar girl or a gogo -go dancer's family a dowry it's actually a bit of a joke because because in Thai culture, when you give a dowry, it's, you, you know, you're kind of, um, I'm trying to say it in a, a polite way here, you're kind of um, taking the daughter from the family as a pure girl, and, and that dowry is a, uh, not conversation, that's the wrong word, but it, it's a traditional thing, and, you know, once a girl's been married and had children, she's dancing on a stage, it's, it's so... Um, a sin sod, a dowry, it's so out of touch with Thai culture, it's just not, um, you know, I can't really explain it here very, very well. If I ever bump into any of you guys in a bar in, in, in Sukhumvit or something, I'll sit down properly and explain it if you're interested, all right? Um, so I'm not going to get myself in any trouble now, I'll just get straight back in to the stories. Okay, so this is the main event, this one. This is from a guy called Martin, and uh, I quite enjoyed reading this, and uh, see how you get on with this one, guys. My name is Martin and I reside, I reside in Michigan, USA. I am a 54 year old and recently visited Thailand vacationing solo from mid-February to mid-March 2022. I am a big fan of Thailand Bound and the first-hand accounts from travellers of all walks of life that you narrate. I am close to retirement and Thailand was my ninth country as I love trips abroad. Thailand is alluring and not without its pitfalls in many ways. I am in law enforcement in the US and have a pretty good sense of my surroundings and opposing personalities. I am happy to report I was not robbed, scammed or conned as it is necessary to be vigilant and clear-eyed of your surroundings anywhere in the world and not just Thailand. I will add once more that your personal experience and stories plus your Consistent advice to do your research are a necessary service to be taken seriously. I had not been on vacation abroad for two years due to the pandemic and accrued a lot of vacation leave, so I decided I'm not going to wait any longer and booked a trip to the land of smiles. I completed arrangements such as a one-way flight to Phuket and hotel accommodation for the first couple of days. I wanted to make my travel more of an adventure so that when I took a whole month off, I could take my time booking my flight back to the US. Along with hotel reservations while in Thailand on the basis that I didn't know where my journey would take me or where I would end up. Being single and divorced for some time, I was interested in meeting a nice Thai lady as I had a couple of weeks before I left the U US. I joined a dating site exclusively seeking Thai women and went to work. Based on what I have seen on YouTube shown the famous soys in Pattaya 
and the Sukhumvit area of Bangkok, along with Bangla Road in Phuket, I can see why men go to these popular destinations to meet Thai girls. As I mentioned, I'm 54 and I'm not really into the bar scene in Thailand, although I don't mind having a look as long as I have some female company with me, as I'm not interested in dating a bar girl or a go -go dancer. I have listened to enough of your viewers' stories to realise that many guys get scammed when they hook up with these types of girls, as they are mostly beautiful, add alcohol to the mix and you have the perfect recipe for a disaster. We all know that Thai bar girls are very cunning and good at what they do, but you can't really blame them for what they do as they need money to help their families. The guys who go out there are just as much to blame for their eventual downfall. The bar girls don't hold a gun to a guy's head, they will capitalise on all the time you, as a foreigner, give them. I picked Phuket as a destination because it is a de designated test and go destination. Before I left for Thailand, I had several conversations with ladies on dating apps. Some of them caught my attention more than others. So many single and pretty ladies who were very direct about everything from how fluent their English was to what their experiences were. All serious but on different levels. I did change my profile to no bar girls, no go go, which generated comments and curiosity in their own right. As the time got closer to my trip, I hoped I would meet a nice Thai lady I could meet and date when I flew into Thailand. I had great conversations and a lot of interest with several possibilities, then finding myself committing to one only to find a better one and then an even better one after that. I hate to say it, but I burnt a couple of bridges along the way. I tried to be as transparent as I could, but being 9,000 miles from a destination and wanting to find a good Thai lady while not hurting any feelings at the same time was difficult. I wish I could say I didn't mess up, but I will add again that Thai women are very direct and honest about their feelings. Eventually, I contacted with what you often describe as a stunner, a very beautiful girl called Cheria. She is so beautiful, she actually won an award near the end of 2021 from the dating site I found her on for having so many likes. Now, I did stick to my principle of trying to find wholesome attributes, but there was no way not to think of how immaculate and gorgeous this woman was every time I saw her. Cheria was a bit shy, but laughed and smiled a lot and making her personality very pleasant. The site I used listed what part of Thailand girls lived in and I developed a strategy to find someone not from the popular tourist cities, cities like Bangkok, Pattaya and Phuket. I thought a lady from a rural province or even a village would be much more genuine. Not that the cities don't have Thai women of moral character, but I had a hunch my chances would be better looking in the rural areas of Thailand, just personal choice I guess. Cheria spoke enough English to get us started and we chatted on the line app for a while and then Facebook Messenger where we had access to each other's profiles with the ability to go back to previous posts to get a feel for each other as we had continued to move forward getting to know each other a little bit better. Cheria never hesitated at any question I asked her and I was transparent about myself. She is 36 and lived in a smaller city two and a half hours drive from Bangkok. Cheria had one teenage daughter and she had been divorced four years earlier after 14 years of marriage to a Thai man who was also a police officer. Cheria told me that there had been a gambling issue that caused the divorce. She married when she was just 17. Her now ex-husband was 41 which now makes him 60 and a 24 year old age difference. In America, there is a negative stigma attached to marriages where the age difference is so far apart. But for the young Thai ladies in Thailand, marrying just to have stability or as it benefits her immediate family is a logical choice, almost a business decision regardless of age difference as the alternatives sometimes lead to ongoing poverty or can lead to a girl becoming a bar girl or a go-go dancer or maybe something worse. Cheria would have at least had her family farm to rely on, but my point is many Thai women in general have few choices. Cheria and I initially planned for me to take my first day's quarantine in Phuket, then wait for the day five test, then I was going to meet her in Bangkok. 
My first day in Thailand, I received my negative test result six hours after arriving, which I used to take a long nap while waiting. And after 24 hours of flight and travel, I took a taxi to a nearby beach not far from Phuket International Airport and had dinner as a sunset over the Andaman Sea. I video chatted to Cheria and we scrapped the plan of waiting five days before I flew to Bangkok and I was on a flight to her the following afternoon. She agreed to pick me up at the airport, which was great. When I saw how happy she was that I made it to Thailand, I just took it upon myself to get to her as soon as I could. Cheria picked me up at the airport. She had some family members living in Bangkok. Her uncle was a taxi driver, plus another relative had an apartment for us to stay in for as long as we wanted, so as to make matters convenient. I was so happy to see Cheria, and she appeared to feel the same about me. It was early in the day, so we visited some relatives because she wanted to introduce me. Later that evening, I offered to take everyone to dinner, which turned out to be a nice celebration. It was a nice place near the river. Dinner plus drinks for all six of us was about 4,000 baht or about $120 or 100 UK pounds at today's exchange rate, which wasn't bad at all. Sharia and I finally ended up alone after dinner as the relatives went their separate ways. Honeymoon aerobics went on and off and on again throughout and into the early hours. And even though I was tired, I loved every minute of it. We stayed in Bangkok for a couple more days doing some shopping at the Icon Sion Mall and taking a river cruise. Cheria and I flew to Phuket in time for my day five negative test and we headed south and stayed at a hotel called the Secret Cliffs overlooking Caron Beach for a week where we did parasailing, chilled by the beach and dined as there is not one bad restaurant in Phuket that I am aware of. It is often difficult to get to a restaurant destination because of the street food vendors along the way. They make you hungry as well. Some nights we just loaded up on barbecue chicken, beef or pork ribs. The giant shrimp are called prongs, grilled corn on the cob, curry and all the spicy noodles and endless sauce you can think of. We would go back to the hotel, eat and watch people on the beach from our balcony. Aerobics, as you would guess, went on between the scenes and especially evenings and mornings. We then moved to a hotel right on Patong Beach, a couple of miles north, which was closer to Bangla Road. We went to James Bond Island on a day trip where a famous scene with two famous actors, Roger Moore and Christopher Lee, was filmed. Cheria and I rode on an elephant and did a sunset cruise along the coastline and mostly spent our days on the beach. We did Bangla Road a couple of nights, which is the US version of Bourbon Street in New Orleans or Times Square in New York. Phuket as a whole, and particularly Bangla Road, has a whole vibe and energy it is hard to put into words. I must give credit to the Thai people who create the tourist areas along the seafront and make them so wonderful. Obviously, it's a great destination for single men, but I also seen lots of couples and families also enjoying themselves. All the activities Sharia and I did together with the great chemistry we had together made Thailand my favourite destination and especially Phuket. Cheria and I agreed to head back north to Bangkok for the last leg of my incredible journey, but not before some drama that I will take responsibility for. When I said at the beginning of my story that Thailand was my ninth country I'd been to, my previous destination was the Philippines where I had travelled to eight times. I had a relationship with a Filipino lady and we had visa paperwork ongoing, but there was no progress to date. I had waited patiently for three years. Long story short, the pandemic hit the Philippines very hard due to it being an island nation and the density of the population. It made it very difficult to travel and flight tickets were three times more expensive than what they, were, what they normally were to fly pre-pandemic. My now ex in the Philippines became very demanding about sending money and I ended our relationship but still sent some money long before I travelled to Thailand and after the relationship was over. My last step, or so I thought breaking off matters with the ex from the Philippines, was to give her one last chunk of money, tell her I wasn't sending any more, then I blocked her on Facebook. This all went okay until months later, here I am in Thailand, when Cheria posted some pics of myself and her on Facebook page. 
Little did I know my ex-Filipino was spying on all of my Facebook friends and though another account and all hell broke loose. My ex-Filipino started sending Sharia old photos of me from our previous relationship and she was trying to friend request members of Sharia's family and she even sent set photos to my ex-wife in America who I'd been divorced from for 20 years. All kinds of semi-compromising pictures. This ordeal lasted for about five days and wasn't a serious problem. However, Sharia wasn't happy about it and it paused our momentum until I explained the reality of what this girl's intentions were and I told Sharia that she should not, this should not come between us. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no good way to end a relationship with a Filipino girl because like Thai girls, they can be extremely jealous. Sharia was gracious enough and allowed us to get back to normal again. Upon flying back to Bangkok, we rested for a day, then went to her hometown where her immediate family lived. This was a two and a half hour bus trip through the countryside and farming areas with fresh tilled land cattle dirt roads with palm trees along the perimeters of the fields. The landscape there reminded me of the rural Michigan on summer's evenings where I grew up, except the palm trees are oak and maple trees in the Midwest United States. Sharia's family has a goat farm where everyone does their part. Her mother oversees a whole operation. Her father left long ago, leaving a sister, a son-in-law and a few local farmhands that tend to the farm as needed. I personally grew up on a farm with cattle, chickens and had worked the fields during my younger years, which I identified with, which made me connect more to Sharia in that sense. During the day, some of the family took me to scenic areas and we visited several temples. As you know, Thailand is mostly Buddhist and is unique in that you never see two temples that look alike, much like the distinction of Christian churches in America. At night, I ate barbecue chicken, grilled corn on the cob, pineapple and drank Budweiser's. About a week earlier, I booked my flight from Bangkok to Detroit, Michigan and stayed in Bangkok with her at the relative's apartment in the last days before I departed. Sharia very much wants a continuing relationship and I have been back in the US now for a couple of weeks. Sharia and I are already planning my trip to go back and do it all over again. I can retire at any time, but I will evaluate take an inventory and create a timetable. Thailand is my favorite destination and I will eventually move there to live permanently while coming back to the US. Charia and I are in contact in some form daily and I miss her dearly since day one of being back. I was lucky to find Sharia and even luckier that she had an interest in me. Never once did Sharia ask me for any money and I had to force her to take 10,000 baht on my last day there before I know, knew she had taken time off work to be with me. Many men looked at her along the way, everywhere we went and she always handed herself with class. It's easy to get caught up like in some of your viewers' stories that result in heartbreak but there are also many gorgeous, good hearted Thai ladies worth the effort but like you say you have to do your research I have also enclosed a photo but as always it is for your eyes only uh, and I've got to tell you guys I'm not just saying this she's a very 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 beautiful woman right let me let me just uh, jump in and tell you something very very quickly here now now a lot of guys a lot of these stories that are crash and burn stories now obviously they go into a go-go bar and they I mean where, where, where are we going to find a nice girl in a go-go bar a lot of fun but you know not marrying material and um, what they do they develop relationships and it all goes south as I keep telling you on this channel now something you might not know there are a lot of available women in Thailand that have children they might have one child two child they're still stunning looking women they're still of the age that they make very very good wives or girlfriends what it is in Thailand Thai, Thai men they will not take on another man's children you know in the west if you meet somebody and she's got a child or a couple of child you fall in love with that woman um, you know there are some guys who won't but most guys it won't really be an issue if it's one child that you know if he falls in love with a woman in the west he'll take on the child that doesn't happen in Thailand with Thai men so unfortunately with Thai women they have no other options they are either going to stay alone for the rest of their lives or 
perhaps they're lucky enough to meet a decent foreign guy who'll look after them because as i keep saying a, a, a thai man will not take on another man's children's whatever the circumstances it, it's always been like that maybe there's a, the odd exception but i i've never seen it uh, and generally that's a, that's a rule right guys we're going to finish with the uh, third story it's three stories today this one's a short one but this is another nice story without giving the end away um so let's just get straight into this one this starts, as do many of these stories, after I got divorced from my first wife when I was 50. As I only work a few months a year, I had plenty of free time for travelling. I trekked up to Everest Base Camp, cycling in various countries, including a trip around parts of Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and doing a scuba diving course in Pattaya. While in Pattaya, I naturally availed myself of what was available in the evenings. A couple of years after my divorce, I was a bit fed up of living alone in the UK and had been ho hopeless at dating. So I thought, why not invite one of Patty's many ladies to come and live with me here in the UK? Then the issue was which one to choose. This was before internet dating really took off, so nighttime entertainment venues were the only realistic way to find a person of my choice. I enthusiastically started interviewing prospective candidates. I could have chosen a stunning young beauty, but could see that such a person was unlikely to be satisfied with life with a 53-year-old man. Moreover, the person you most enjoy doing bedroom aerobics with may not be the person you want to spend 24 hours a day with for the rest of your life. So I started to realize that the best candidate would be a girl lady in her late 20s or very early 30s who was sufficiently mature to be satisfied with a lifestyle I could offer. A lifestyle living in a comfortable house with no financial worries and with five to six foreign holidays a year. One possibility, a silly test I did, was to arrange to meet the girl at a specific time during the day. If they turned up an hour or more late and gave excuses like forgot to charge phone or not wake up on time or have to go visit sick, sick friend, then red lights started flashing and that was one crossed off the list as it would be clear to me that they were probably being less than truthful and were probably with another customer. Eventually, I met one very nice, not totally stunning, but still attractive girl aged 29. Her English was quite good, but what made her stand out for me was the fact that in addition to her go-go work, she was taking part-time courses in English and computer studies at a local government adult education college. This was clearly someone who wanted to get out of the adult entertainment scene and improve her life. In order to get a UK marriage visa, we had to prove we had a long-term relationship of at least a couple of years. So to keep her busy and away from her friends, possibly luring her back to bar work, I sent her on a one-year course at a Bangkok hospital specialising in care for the elderly. These are advertised in several Thai women's magazines. She spent six months doing classwork and then six months working on the wards as a healthcare assistant. She loved every moment as she had been forced to leave school at 14 to work for an aunt cooking and selling food at a Bangkok market and relished the opportunity to improve her education. We've now been married over 15 years. One reason I mentioned the course she did is that there is a desperate shortage of care workers in most Western countries. With their respect for the elderly, Thai women often make excellent carers. To become a carer, you actually don't need any qualifications, though my wife did have those with her diploma from the Bangkok hospital. Pay for a carer in the West is usually minimum wage, about £9 an hour in the UK, $10 per hour in the US and €10 Euro per hour in Europe. But if your Thai wife has no expenses as you are paying for your house and things like food and giving her an allowance to support her family, this minimum wage can give your wife around 60,000 baht a month. By Thai standards, 60,000 baht per month is a high salary. Within a couple of years, she can easily save enough to build a house in her village for her, fa for her family or to buy them more land or to send a family member to university. Moreover, Working as a carer makes sure they don't get bored while you may be at work. Ensures they quickly improve their language skills and lets them make their own circle of friends from the many countries carers often come from. And if you don't trust your Thai wife, then the problem might well be you and not her. 
And if you don't trust her, you certainly should never have married her in the first place. So no car crash endings yet. Of course, things may change. But my modest advice to firstly that you should look at yourself and be realistic about the kind of person who, who you find living with you satisfying. After all, you may not be God's gift to women, even though 200 girls on Patia's Soy 6 have told you that you really are a handsome man. Then you should not fall in love with the first beauty you set your eyes on. Instead, you should do sufficient interviewing and learn to distinguish the difference between someone who will take you for an eye-watering, expensive, emotional ro roller coaster ride and someone who genuinely wants to improve theirs and their family's lives. Then there's no reason why you shouldn't marry and be happy with your Patia princess. Okay, so there you go. One a little bit different there. He's gone to Patia and he's uh, met a, a go-go dancer and married her. So I'm glad that worked out. Um, one thing I've learned from these stories over the last couple of years, I must have, there must be 500 of them on the channel now, but one thing that stands out that I've kind of learned is the guys who, who set off to find a wife or a long time term girlfriend, they're not going on holiday for a couple of weeks and going bar hopping. They're, they've actually been looking for a, a long term partner and they decide to go to part, um, um, Thailand they do a lot of research and then they finally get to Thailand and they do what this guy did you know they they have um interviews the wrong word it's almost like you're going to employ somebody but you you know they meet various partners and they have a lot of common sense involved those kind of relationships a lot of the time most of them seem to work out it's the guys who go to Thailand who don't have any intentions of they don't go there to meet anybody they're going to have a good time lay on the beach eat good food and they just happen to pop into places like Nana Plaza or Soy 6 on Patia they, they meet some girl a couple of nights out and they fall in love or they try to develop a relationship and, and then it doesn't work so you know if you're one of those guys and you, you're looking for a long term relationship there's a lot you can take out of these stories that you can learn and uh, I won't say anything more than that right to end before I go um, I'd just like to say I mentioned this on my live stream last night I'd just like to say thank you to everybody a sincere thank you to everybody who suggested a title for the upcoming book as you know a, a lot of these stories that have been sent to me I've got permission to read them out on a public forum which is the internet a book so there's no real names or anything, so nobody's going to be uh, exposed, as it were. So I've got somebody helping me. I've got a book coming out that'll be about 200 pages, a volume one. There might be a volume two, three, and four. I had a lot of guys suggest a name for the book. I needed something that was neutral, that, you know, it's difficult to explain what a book's about in a few, in five words, six words. You know, you need a title and a subtitle. Some of the suggestions were specific to Bangkok or Patia, which I, I wanted something a little bit more global. Uh, and I wanted something that would kind of explain what the stories were about. So I've got the title. Before I read the title, I'm just going to say thanks again, guys, for all your suggestions. It wasn't a case of it was difficult to find one uh, title. The difficulty was rejecting 10 titles sort of thing because there were so many good ones. But the one I'm going to kind of stick with, uh, the main title, obviously, it relates to the channel. It's like a brand, isn't it? So the, the title is Thailand Bound and the subtitle is Tales of Love and Lost. From, uh, Love and Lost. From, uh, let me read that again. I've screwed, cocked that up. The, the title is Thailand Bound. Tales of Love and Loss from the Land of Smiles. Uh, and I think that's quite a, a good title and that should just about tell everybody, uh, you know, what it's all about. So I'm hoping next month that'll be on Amazon. It's not going to be a whole bunch of money, maybe uh, £5, $6, something like that. Uh, and if it goes well, uh, we'll look into the next one maybe being audible because it, we, we're not doing an audible this time. It's quite complicated. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. All right, guys. So uh, lastly, the last thing to say is, um, you know, if you like what I do on the channel and you'd like to support me, you can buy me a coffee or a beer, whatever you feel like. There is a link in the description or you could become a member or at the very least, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel for more of the same as they say. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see the guys who like the live streams. I'll be in the live stream Friday at 9 p.m. Uh, until then, uh, there'll be more stories next Saturday, but thanks for uh, tuning in again, guys.